Hi, I'm Scott Pekarik with Verde Real Estate Group with today's Landlord's Guide topic. And with me today is Dan Earhart. Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for coming in. So Dan was just at the 2020 Apartment Summit. Yep. Uh, Every year put on by some of the leaders in the industry. Okay. Talking about what are we going to expect to see in 2020? Okay, what are we going to expect to see in 2020? So what did you learn? Uh, I assume they they went back in into the 2019, yep. talked about the trends and <clears throat> some prognostications for what 2020 and beyond is going to be, correct? Exactly. And for the viewers who don't know about the apartment industry specifically, is we've experienced an amazing industry for multiple years. And, uh, you know, they said the last three years, it's been nothing but growth. We're definitely... Uh, putting a bunch of brand new inventory online. And 2019, they broke records with development for the last, like, I think it was like eight years or so. And uh, um, it's been, it's truly been a, a, an amazing run here, an amazing yeah. expansion. Uh, I believe it was two years ago, people were talking about, from a development perspective, that we were basically in the bottom of the eighth inning, you know, for those of you that understand baseball. Two years ago. Everything's going to dump out. Last year, everything was going to dump out. This year, people are saying everything's going to dump out, but probably not because it hasn't dumped out. Well, yeah, and, and like a broken clock, that's right twice a day. You yeah. know, what, you know, nobody really has a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. uh, all they can really do is rely on trends and you know, you know, past performance is not a guarantee of future, uh, future outcomes or future, sure. uh, future sure. profits. So the... As we look forward to 2020, I'm really curious because you know we we're on the ground. We manage, you know, several hundred units of rental. You yourself, you manage a large complex. Yeah, know. we've got 600 apartments, some duplexes adjacent to the property, and um, you know I'm there every day. So I'm right. an operations person, and I'm connected with you know some of the big players in town. They, they share information with me freely because we're not necessarily going right after them yeah and, and i think i think that as we we move in like every every year that goes by where the expansion continues people have you know we we all have our ears to the track and we're wondering okay is are we finally going to see some pullback are we finally going to see uh some pressure on rents and what uh what were the folks saying at the at the conference yeah so you know 7200 brand new apartments delivered last year that's the the round number. Right. And already this year we are seeing the first the first sign to rent pullback is concessions and especially when you have a brand new property doing lease up concessions. Right. So before you get anybody in the shiny new uh, product, you already offered them one free month or you know, free parking for a year, those type of things. And so that's happening. The flat screen TVs don't have the same draw that they used to. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think so. But that, yeah, that is definitely something a flat screen TV installed, mounted, right, you know, those kind right. of things. And, and then charge them for the, uh, the damage when they move. Yeah. Okay. The nice thing is, like, the building cycle from permit to being able to get a renter in there is typically around three years. So we know in 2020, they're going to build a lot of new apartments. Right. And we know right now that there are more vacancies than the same time last year. Right. That's kind of nobody's debating that. And from my perspective, well, cool. people are being honest about it and, yeah. and saying, "Hey, no, we're we're we're, we're full occupancy." Meanwhile, well, we yeah. got thirty percent shadow. Everybody's honest about it, except for the people whose interests want the money to keep pumping. Right, <laughs> right. Well, and I and I think that's um, it's important to note that there are, I think, over eleven thousand units planned for for twenty twenty that are that are either being built or going to be yep. built, and. What's interesting is to see the impact on some of these properties that were new three, four, five, six years ago, and what kind of concessions or what kind of pressures on rent there will be on those properties, because they're not the shiny object anymore. Exactly. And and did they talk about that at all? They did, and this is maybe a term that isn't um, known to the public, but it's called concession jumping. So you got somebody living in a three-year-old property. Yeah. They moved in at a pretty good rate. Every year they get a little increase, little increase. And they loved being in that brand new property. And imagine if you owned a home and you could just jump into a new home and get a better deal. So uh, those properties that are requiring the A-plus rents, the top dollar rents, 
Um, new ones come out, and the rents are going to be pretty close to the same, but you're going to get a brand new product, maybe a month off, a half a month off, some other incentives. And you, you know, having company over and things is fun. Like, look where I live. That property that we've been watching being built for two years, I'm living there. Yeah, I think there's a certain segment of the rental population that wants to be in the new shiny hip, yeah, you know, talked about place. And there's probably probably not a whole lot that that existing landlord can do if that is how they prioritize, mm -hmm. you know, the, the new thing. But like, say for instance, what are people all saying in terms of building costs? I mean, I from what I'm seeing, they're going up every single year and for me personally that's where i it's hard to wrap my head around eleven thousand new units building costs are way out of touch i mean they're talking about the cost of just moving dirt pouring foundations all-time record high you can't even find people to do it if you have the money and then on top of that labor shortages right labor costs um taxes one of the things that was spoke about was we have had awesome rental increases for our market but the tax rates are outpacing the rental increases. So even though the property owners are making you know, more money on rent, they're not even keeping up with their own inflation, you could say. Well, I think there's a backlash brewing there, particularly yeah. with the property taxes, because there seems to be no restraint in the various municipalities in terms of the growth of, uh, of the levy. And I th what's masking a little bit of it to the layperson is the fact that we're, we have so many new properties coming online that are helping maybe absorb some of those levy increases, but at a certain point, you know, the music stops. And as what happened in 2009 and 10, there was people who got very upset yep. about uh, the rate of increase of their property taxes. There was a huge backlash. I remember doing hundreds of tax property tax uh, challenges, and I think I won most of them because we were basing our findings on fact. Like the property that the city would assess for $500,000 was in fact worth three fifty. Yeah, and of course that increased your operating costs too, like yours. Absolutely. You probably had to hire somebody to go after this and especially people with you know 20,000 units, they're not counting on getting these ex you know extraordinary like unmanageable increases that they can appeal and they do and they win, but it's just another layer that has been um, challenging, especially for what I got from the summit is the local investors, the Midwest investors, uh, some of them, not all of them, are frustrated because people from the coast expect less on return. Right. And they're not a long term hold necessarily. So they're looking at it hey, I'm going to get this property up and going, get the valuation up, three to five years, dump it off, and be done with it. Yeah, I, I think we're seeing uh, there's uh, the, the market dynamics have shifted a little bit and you know there will continue to be money coming in from the coast but as we saw with you know well that's commercial probably Calhoun Square I mean that was purchased you know a large part by Chase you know they sold Calhoun Square I believe or it's up for sale for and, and, and they're probably going to lose money yep. uh, the walkway in uptown that was an example where I think yeah, I think that might have been Chase involved in that as well and there was a massive loss on that. I mean, I think it was uh, seven or eight figures. So, wow. yeah. so there's, uh, you know, so there's there's some risks of purchasing into this market right now, and the risks are real because we keep seeing, yes, building costs are high. You know, if you have existing housing, you're you're going to continue to see pressure on your bottom line in the form of, you know, higher labor costs for maintenance, higher materials costs. Um, there may at some point be downward pressure on rents. Yeah. yeah, and then just not being able to follow your plan was the big frustration from development people. I mean, they don't plan to necessarily put in 40,000 um, square feet of retail space on the first level, but to appease some city ordinances or for whatever reasons, they like kind of adjust the plan and then they can see some backlash in that. You know, if you have a wide open space that maybe like even in Chanhassen, there's an Aldi. Once that lease runs up, there's some exposure there. Right. All D moves out. You got a big blank box that you got to kind of figure out, and that was a big thing from the from the development people too. Is like stick with your plan. Um, you can't make certain changes that are going to have a big long term negative impact. Right. Well, yeah, retail's under a lot of pressure right now. If you look at uh, look what happened with uh, 
you know, the video rental, the, the video rental stores, you know, the, the DVD, the VHS stores. The, I'm uh, almost the, young enough to say the what? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the blockbuster videos. And, the what? You know, and and I, I, I believe, like, as, you know, Netflix went to Blockbuster and said, look, buy us and we'll handle your digital content delivery. Blockbuster said no. Yeah. Uh, how'd that work out? So we're, we're seeing a little, you know, we're seeing that transition on the, more of the commercial retail side. Like, how many you know, spaces were vacated by Toys R Us, right? And, and what's the next one? You know, Sears is dying a, and Kmart are dying a slow, well, I'd say fast, death. Um, you know, who's next? You know, JC Penney's gone, Shopco. You know, as you go down the list, what impact is that going to have? You know, and, and, you know, we focus more on the residential. Yeah, the things, and but, but it's but it's you can learn from the commercial, like Best Buy, right? Kind of reposition themselves. All of a sudden, they're dealing in appliances more, home services like tech services. Same with apartment buildings. Well, like they, they got themselves out of the commodities and, and into the you know the more higher margin. I yeah, guess. and so same with the apartment industry. You know, we consider the you know the plan of hey, you can rent this space. This is your space. We'll leave you alone. You pay your rent. That model's over if you want top rents. Top rents requires high touch customer service. Customers number one always. So if a customer comes to you and wants something that maybe normally you wouldn't expect to do, you need to have the ability to ask whoever's going to approve that, how can we make this happen? My company, it's easy. I work directly for the owners. So if somebody comes in and says, I want this apartment, but I want all hardwood floors, we'll put a price tag on it. If they want to pay that price tag, win, win. Well, right. Huge if, if they're win-win. willing to pay a premium for it, and you think they're going to be, you know, sign a longer term lease, you can amortize those costs over the the life of the lease. Uh, it might make sense. I mean, I think the key is keep an open mind. Yeah, and be bold. Way. Be bold, though. Sometimes they'll pay the entire installation costs on a year or sixteen month lease. Right. If they move out, you just had a free upgrade. Well, and, and it's I pretty talk, rare. I pretty talk rare. about this in in our landlord series where we talk about you know tips for landlords to. Um, you know, maximize their, their revenue, maximize their bottom line, because, you know, high top line doesn't always translate to, you know, high bottom line, but, or the highest bottom line, but, you know, being, being quick to make decisions, you know, you said it, you know, bold, like don't, don't him and ha for three or four days, you know, when you're going through A, the approval process, or B, you know, making a decision, because the quality renters, the quality tenants, they have options right now. Tons of options. And that's a really good point. Like everybody knows who's ever worked in sales with real estate in the lead management. Every minute or so you don't get back to that lead. There's a less of a chance they're gonna you're gonna get back to them, right? Same goes. Somebody comes to your property, they're touring, that is the hottest prospect on earth. And they're interested. And they have one question. If you can't turn that around to them and get an answer or solution, you're gonna lose that client. And the clients in I felt it have more of the options and range right now of different things, especially with rents that are not affordable In affordable oh, housing. Right, right. We all know it's, it's, well, it's full. Got, yeah, I mean, you've it's, got, you know, class B class A stuff. Those tenants are, you know, those are the yeah. high, the high dollar, you know, high income, probably great credit score. Great Baby employment. boomers sold a house, just made a couple hundred thousand dollars, if not more. Yeah, probably Can, more. And they've never lived in a place with a front desk or they've never lived in a place that will come there and fix your toilet or change your light bulbs or like we do everything. Well, and I think you, you nailed it there too. They, they haven't, it's been maybe 30 years since they've done that or, you know, 40 years. Exactly. And, you know, these are people who you need to handle differently than the career renter because I will, you know, I've had some experience with this on some of the properties we manage. When you have people coming from, you know, boomers coming from, you know, maybe a home that sold for a million dollars and they're transitioning, they do have a higher expectation. Yeah. There's a little more, uh, dare I say, you know, there's, there's different, there's different types of entitlement and, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, you need to know how, you know, how to manage that interaction and. Exactly. Know. And what we call that, you know, is renter by choice, right? Right. Renter by choice. And in my opinion, some of the best renters, somebody who has owned a home, for, especially for an extended period of time, you're not going to find a better renter because they do know how to take care of the property. They carry that pride of ownership into your property. There might be a little more high touch, but in the right ways. Well, they and, and they and come they, into the... They're going to expect more from your other tenants too, maybe. Exactly. Know, tenants in the property. And I will tell you that you need to make sure you're, you know, you're matching your communication style to theirs. You know, you've got... 
you know, everyone wants to pick on the uh, millennials and stuff, including me, because why not? I'm Generation X and we don't like anybody. No, just kidding. <laughs> we love everyone. But the, you know, millennials like to, you know, they, they don't like face to face. You know, yeah. In general, I'm making general broad generalizations. They like to text and stuff. R- yeah. Rule of thumb, communicate back the way you've been communicated yeah, your, to. Your, your baby boomers, uh, they not only like a phone call, they like to meet with you at times. So if you're not willing to, you know, to un- no, I don't know, if you're not willing to adapt to that reality, you could lose out on some very highly qualified prospects and great tenants. Yeah, and you lose out on meeting some really amazing people. I, I like the the retiree or whatever you want to call it crowd. They can they got so so much to offer your community and your other residents. Like you said, they impact the other residents. A lot of them will put on like uh, they'll get groups together for cooking classes or Super Bowl parties. They like to organize like that. So it, there's a there's a value add there, um, just catering to their needs. And then one thing that I think is really important too is meshing the baby boomers with the millennials, Gen X, is difficult. But if you're conscious of what you're doing, it, it can really set you apart from your competition. So like um, baby boomers, they they do want to be able to rent out that event room space and have people over. And the, the maybe the Generation X or millennials. I mean, they have to be able to be connected at all times, everywhere in your property through Wi-Fi. All I mean, right, these are non-negotiables. Right. Yeah, and we're, and we're talking more like community type living, you know, with you know, exactly. several hundred yeah. units and stuff. Because it's it's again, it's knowing your audience. Like if you've got you know a fourplex in Uptown, probably not going to be the property that's going to be uh, attracting um, all baby boomers, right? Yeah. Now, if you've got a nice yeah, and I'm gonna I'm again generalizing, but if you've got a nice twenty five hundred square foot uh, you know, duplex, you may you you in 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 Lowry Hill or Kenwood Isles, that might have more appeal yeah. to a baby boomer. And, and mostly, what I'm talking to is about places with amenities, with site yeah. people, with leasing offices. That's that's the area that I play in. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, no, this is really helpful. What's a uh, key takeaway from the uh, from the event? I mean, the key takeaway is business is still good. It's, it's not, it's probably not just going to drop out. We're not going to see, you know, double digit vacancy numbers, very unlikely. Um, One of the things, especially for the people who are listening who are property managers or operation managers, take care of your staff, keep your highest performers, your best people, because if not, I'll hire them or he'll hire them. Um, They're just, the staff is is one of the things they really talked about. It's difficult. What a lot of companies are starting to do is cross train like from other hospitality industries. And that's what it is. Real estate apartment market is a hospitality industry. You have to love people and you have to want to deliver for them and um, make sure that, you know, you're giving them a great value. Yeah. I think you nailed it. You, a good source of potential employees in our, our business is really People in the hospitality industry, customer service-based people, uh, people who who have been trained uh, to interact with people. Yeah, and be great with people. Yeah, it's it's not enough to um, you know say I really like I really like rental property and you know I kind of like people. It's it's more than that. It's understanding that this is uh, a relationship that you're developing, and the better you can do, and the more. Uh, you can train your staff, or better yet, have somebody else train them to come in and where they already uh, innately know that they have to provide great service. Uh, that's going to pay off in the long run with less turnover, uh, more people filling the property, and you know, really, you'll be the you'll be the property that stays, you know, ninety plus percent rented while everyone else is struggling to find yeah. people. There's no there's no easier way there's no easy way to place a tenant than to keep the one that's already there. Yeah, retention is another takeaway is keep everybody um, at all costs, you know, um, maybe lessening those rental increases, maybe having a conversation about, hey, how's your apartment? Do you need some touch up paint? Those kind of things. Also, um, one of the things that we talked about was like differentiating, like package management is something you cannot ignore if you have more than probably what, 20 apartments in a complex or the packages are all over the place. So investing in a system um, that's going to work for your residents and the staff you have there, very important. Um, well, I think you nailed it, though, like asking them what they want. Like do a survey. Send a monthly yeah. survey out. Okay, what are we doing? Great. 
what can we improve on? What would you like to see? Now, that's not a guarantee you can come through with it. But, you know, people always say, gosh, I wonder what I wonder what my tenants want. Have you ever thought about asking them yeah. what they want? And yeah. see what they might tell you. The other thing I'd have people reconsider if you're experiencing vacancy and you're not allowing pets, you know, reconsider that policy. It's it's more and more obvious to me that renters like to have pets, you know. And well, and we're in we uh, we have a separate video on companion or therapy dogs. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, you may say I don't allow pets and I won't allow them and you, you can take my pet policy from my cold, dead hands. But I'll tell you what. The state of Minnesota says that if someone has one of those certificates, you cannot deny them that pet in your property. And by pet, I don't necessarily mean just a dog. I mean it could be uh, it could be a whole myriad of of animals. So something to consider. And I, you know, we will uh, we'll definitely make sure that you know for those of you interested, you know, you can watch our video on um, companion animals and understand what your rights are and what your obligations how are. How not to get yourself in court. <laughs> yeah, how not to go to court because, you you know, it's uh, court is there when you need it, but really it's not a place I like to spend a lot of time if possible. So, zero amount of time. <laughs> right, yeah, zero is the best number. So anyway, so, well, Dan, this was great. Yeah, um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Uh, this has been useful. We hope, um, we hope that everyone watching found this content valuable. Uh, if you want to reach us at Verde Property Management, call or text 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, or online 24-7 at verde-realestate.com, verde-realestate.com. Thank you so much.